Hello and welcome to Newsmakers for this Wednesday, October 23rd, 2024. I'm Louis Butko, and every once in a while here on the show, we like to take you behind the scenes to get to know some of the people you see and don't see here at CHCH. And today, I'm very pleased to be joined by video journalist and anchor Kelly Botello. Hi, a born and raised Hamiltonian. Kelly got her first taste of journalism while as a high school student at St. Thomas More. Her post-secondary journey took her to London, Ontario, to the Media Theory and Production Broadcast Journalism Program between Western University and Fanshawe College. After graduation, Kelly took her first TV reporting job in Thunder Bay. And after a year, returned here to Hamilton after being offered a VJ position. You can barely keep it together. I can barely keep it together as we watch Watch some uh, some clips from back in the day. You really pulled out some old clips. <laughs> I did my homework this morning, Kelly. Batello. Yeah, you really lurked me to get yeah. all this info, eh? Um, the CNE one. Uh, <laughs> that was a great one. Uh, didn't they tell you never eat anything on television? No, uh, I know, right? <laughs> and I did another story too, where I ate a hamburger, and we actually did get viewers like sending in complaints, like that's so gross. <laughs> well, that's the thing about viewers. Um, they're very passionate. Uh, they they love to hear. Uh, to share their opinions. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll get into all of that. But I I did learn something today in my research. Uh, We were almost classmates. Really? Yeah, because I was... I went in for that broadcast uh, journalism Fanshawe Western program too. Oh, yeah. Did you end I, up? Did I you ended up, up at Brock University okay. for uh, for business admin. Um, but yeah, I was like, because we're the same, we're the same age. Yeah, born in the same year, so we would have been going into Are that we program. Born in the same year? I believe. Does it end with a two? No, ninety three. Oh, okay. So you would have been here. Okay, well, okay. Now you get over it. Right, now I feel you're old. older than yeah, me. Yeah, I know. So Let's much make older. That clear. So much older than you. Um, but so we would have been within a year. But yeah, that's cool. You don't go to that program unless you want to be a journalist. Yes. Uh, you wanted to do this. When did you realize that this was what you wanted to do? Um, I would. Th- I think around like grade nine. Um, and there wasn't like. I can't remember like a defining moment where I was like, I want to be a TV news reporter, but it kind of just, I don't know. I kind of just decided that's what I wanted to do. I don't know how, but, um, I was always okay with presentations and like public speaking. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that other people, obviously most people don't enjoy speaking publicly and presenting in front of the class. So I just kind of thought like what I could do with that skill. Yeah. And somehow I got to uh, being a TV news reporter. So yeah. here we are. Because, uh, like, I, you know, I've said this a couple of times and I've had people, like, from the show on. Like, I did, like, there's home videos of me, like, interviewing little my little brothers Aww. and things like that. So, like, yeah, the same idea. But when you realize that this is what you wanted to do, you know. Spec TV at St. Thomas More. Yeah, right? Like, that's right. So like Blast from the past. What steps did you take that like even in grade nine, like that's that's pretty yeah. early on in high school to know that this is what you wanted to do. What steps did you take to get there? Yeah, so in grade nine I already had the idea that I wanted to do that. And so an opportunity came up a little while later, um, that actually one of my teachers, uh tech teachers brought up to me. It was this online show uh at the Hamilton spectator uh, but it was a sports show and they were looking for two high school students to be sports anchors and if you know anything about me <laughs> you know that I don't know anything about sports but I, I thought that it would be an amazing experience and like kind of I would kind of get the feel of you know being on TV yeah. uh, and so I did it and they picked me and a couple of other people so we would do it once a week and we would basically be the anchors of this high school sports show and we would also have to like gather information throughout the week on the sports that were going on in the high school uh, mm-hmm. in our high schools um so that was interesting because <laughs> I legitimately don't know anything about sports uh, but it ended up being really such a cool experience and I got to see the spec newsroom which was amazing obviously the old building now at the the time Um, and it was just such a cool experience and believe it or not I got recognized (laughs) all the time because I was on this the you know 
this online show on the Hamilton Spectator's website. Yeah. And I guess a lot of people in the community would watch it because, you know, their sons and daughters who play basketball and football would be on, we would feature them on the show and sometimes yeah. we'd have interviews with them. So I was, I was working, you know, I had my high school job. I was a cashier at a grocery store <laughs> and you wouldn't believe how many people were like, Hey, you're that girl from Spec TV. And I'd be like, Oh my goodness. Yeah. I didn't think anybody was watching this, but yeah. it was so cool. It was such a cool experience. I really prepared you for those interactions <laughs> every day here at CH Stage. But it, I mean, even like, and we'll get to that. You know, we talked about the viewer experience. Um, there is a certain part of you that even to this day, like when somebody comes up to you and is friendly and is, you know, you, they approach you and be like, hi, like, I don't want to, are you like, we watch you all the time. Yeah. There is that genuine connection that, that we, we do get something out of that. Yeah, totally. As, as being a, like, Oh, wow. Like you see me as a part of your life that you feel like, yeah. you, you know, you can come up. It's nice to know that people are, you know, but we, even we know, of course, that people are on the other side yeah. watching, but sometimes there's a little bit of that disconnect and it's nice to every once in a blue moon. <laughs> By the way, we don't get yeah. recognized. We are not famous. <laughs> Let's put that yeah, out yeah. there. Every once the in a while, somebody will be like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. you're the girl from TV. I, yeah. I like your work or something like that. And yeah, yeah, it is nice to know that people are appreciating what we do. Um, so throughout high school, you got this spec TV gig. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that program specifically, you know, you're either going to the the Ryerson program, yes. um, which required this, which you probably would have had. I, I applied. And you didn't I get applied. in. I got on the wait list. Okay. Yeah. Because someone, I believe uh, Nicole Martin also applied and didn't get in mm. um, because that needed like, and I, you only know if you applied for this program, uh, this MTU program, uh, you needed this giant portfolio. Yeah. And like, my thing was like, I did the announcements at school. Yeah. Like, give me this, uh, put me there. So it was either, uh, Ryerson's program or MTU's program, excuse me. Um, whatever it's called now. I don't even know if that's yeah. right. Um, and that Fanshawe, Western that Fanshawe. Fanshawe Western one. Yeah. So when you got there, like knowing that this is what you wanted to do, like, how hard did you hit the books type uh, thing? Like, what extra credit opportunities did you, did you jump at all that? Or So, uh, when I went to, my first year was at Western. Like you said, mm -hmm. it was a program that was kind of back and forth between Western and Fanshawe. So, the first year was at Western, and it was so heavy on essays and reading. Yeah. And I remember being like... If you are in university, you should read all the books. <laughs> but I, but you, you get better at like skimming through mm -hmm. things because you can't read everything you need to read in university. But in first year, I was like, oh, my God, I have to read this novel by Friday. And I was so like fixated on reading everything and making notes. Um, so I was like pretty stressed, I would say, yeah. the first semester of university. But anyways, you, you get better yeah. at kind of knowing what you actually need to know and what you actually need to do. But it was really heavy on reading and writing essays. I remember a lot of my exams were just essays. Mm. Um, so yeah, first but, year was fun, but a lot of work for sure. Yeah, and then you get the more technical side at the Fanshawe mm -hmm. uh, broadcast a program there. Um, because I always found, too, that you know I went to, like I said, Brock business didn't work out and then I guess I'll try this broadcasting thing that people <laughs> say I should do um and I was uh, I was not an older student but I was older than the, some of my classmates yep. and I felt like okay because this is what I wanted to do like I took every opportunity that was presented yeah. to me, especially at the college level where it's very practical. It's very hands on. Um, what do you remember about that time at Fanshawe that that helped you maybe get a step or, or helped you yeah. become the, you know, the um, career you have now? So we, the students in the broadcast program at Fanshawe ran the radio station mm -hmm. uh, that was like a real radio station. <laughs> <laughs> and we did news. Obviously there was music, but it was like a news uh, programming radio station. Um, and I remember that we would have shifts where we would have to be, you know, the anchor or the reporter on the radio. And some of the shifts would be really early morning. And <laughs> And you're talking like a bunch of 18 year old, 19 year old college students. So I honestly think that prepared me a lot for this industry where you have to sometimes work unpredictable hours. Yeah. Um, but it was really good. You got that sense of going out in the community, um, talking to people, knocking on doors. All of these things are kind of 
make you feel uncomfortable, especially if you've never done it before, knocking on a random stranger's door or stopping people in the mall to try to talk to them. You know how much we get rejected. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's constant. Like, yeah. no, no, people don't want to look at you. So it's no. it's hard, especially when you are not used to that, mm-hmm. not used to, like, having to do these things. So it was such a good experience because it really got you out in the community, out doing these things that you, we do today, yeah. you know, in our jobs. So it was fantastic experience. So it was the practical experience at Fanshawe really um, got a sense of what mm. broadcasting was about in journalism. And then at Western, it was kind of more of the theory, media theory, and uh, kind of the deep dive into journalism yeah. and communications. Um, like I said, was so close to going into that program. If uh, only we're funny. a little bit if younger. If only I was a little bit younger. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so you've graduated. Uh, you get this call. You're just you just want to get into the <laughs> industry, and especially yeah. at college. You know, you hear it from a lot of your professors where they say, "Hey, listen, if you want to make it in this business, you might have to go work at X yeah. Ontario or you know Lloyd mm-hmm. Minster, Saskatchewan, yes. and all these other places." So you'd heard that before. And I never, for this job. I never really thought it would be me. Like, I yeah. always heard that from our professors. Like, you have to go out into small markets if you want to get your foot in the door on TV. And, like, I kind of knew that maybe I'd be open to that. But I don't really know what my plan was. Like, I always wanted to work at CH. Mm-hmm. And I'm born and raised in Hamilton. So I was kind of hoping that I would just get a job at CH. Maybe not on TV, but maybe as a writer or something and then work my way up. And actually, right before I graduated, um, I got a call from our news director at the time, and he wanted to meet me. And I had sent him my demo, and I was, like, so excited. <laughs> and uh, anyways, I, I came in. I had a meeting with him. And he's like, listen, you got a lot of potential, but you need experience. Like, you're really green. And so I was like, oh. So you're not going to hire me. But um, yeah, after that was when I kind of realized, okay, maybe I have a shot at working at CH, but I need to get some more hands on experience. So that's when I started applying to TV jobs in like really small communities across Canada. And actually somebody in the industry sent me this job in Thunder Bay and it was like a TV news reporter in Thunder Bay. And I. I applied to it and then completely forgot about it Yeah, because I had applied to a lot of different jobs and it just like I was working full time then like I had already graduated. I had like a a full time job and uh, not in the industry, just, Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, so I forgot about this job. And then uh, one day I got a call from a news director and he's like, oh, hi, this is so and so from Thunder Bay Television. And I was like. Uh, hi like <laughs> yeah and he's like can you send us a little bit more of your demo or whatever like I had made it to like one of the last couple people that they mm. were considering um so I, I did and then this was months after I had applied by the way like I had completely <laughs> forgotten about this job and then yeah sure enough we had like an interview on the phone and uh I didn't even really realize how yeah. far away Hunter <laughs> Bay was. I kind of was thinking like North Bay, like maybe five mm. hour drive. Yeah. And then he was like, yeah, you got the job if you want it. Like it's, this is how much you're going to get paid, which was, you know, <laughs> you know, less than mi- what minimum wage is now. <laughs> but um, he's like, and you know, it's like Thunder Bay. Like you better bring like a good, nice winter jacket and yeah. uh, some heavy duty boots. But I was all in. I just felt like, why not? Like I was sight twi- unseen too, yeah. right? Yeah, I and knew I, nobody in Thunder Bay. Yeah, and I think that's like, you know, we, when we're talking about this, like we have a lot of shared experience, obviously, with you know college experiences and mm-hmm. these same conversations, like knowing that you wanted to do this. Um, yeah, sometimes you're just gonna have to trust your gut and um, take a leap and take a leap yeah. sight unseen because I, you know, I took a job in Kelowna. Had never been out to Kelowna, BC. Oh, Did, you know, that's went, a nice job yeah. to take, though. <laughs> uh, but like, but yeah. So you, you know, you go yeah. through these experiences, and you know, you're really packing up your life, and and that's what you had to do. And yeah. what, when when did you say yes? And how quickly did you get up there? And so, what was that experience? Yeah, like? they, they gave me two weeks. Okay. And I had to in that two weeks, I tried to find an apartment in yeah. Thunder Bay, just like online and stuff. 
and I packed everything up. I quit my job. I was working at a car dealership in Hamilton at the time. And I just kind of felt like it was one of those like pivotal moments in my life where it was like I was getting really comfortable in the job Hmm. that I was working, but it wasn't in the industry that I wanted to work in. Um, And so it was kind of like, listen, this is now or never. Like I'm do I'm taking this leap and like working towards my dream, which is to be a TV news reporter, or I'm just going to be comfortable and have a nice job here in Hamilton that has nothing to do with TV news. So I was like, you know what, I'll, I'm going. My mom was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) They were happy for me, but of course, like it's so far away and I, you know, I was an adult, I was 22, but still (laughs) like I was like kind of young and naive and yeah, so I packed up in two weeks I was there and I remember like getting to Thunder Bay in November. Mm -hmm. And seeing all these cars with Plugged in. plugs <laughs> hanging out of the front. And I had no idea what that was for yeah. until like December hit and everyone had to plug in their cars. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> I've never experienced cold like that yeah. in my life. But it was such an amazing experience. That's awesome. Uh, and then do you feel like that conversation with that news director, like A, Gave you that two kind of things, I would think. Like, hey, oh, you're not good enough, sorry, right now. Yeah. And that can be super discouraging, especially when you've been working since high school at yeah. this goal. And, like, yeah, you know, you're in college. You're still, you know, you feel like, okay, yes, you haven't graduated, but you're confident in your abilities. And then to be yeah. told no. And then that kind of pushes this comfortability thing. Totally. Um, how... Obviously, not a decision that you regret at all, but mm-hmm. how, how hard was that decision for you? You know, it was one of those things where I knew I didn't have uh, experience to work here at CH. And so, but like the, having that meeting with the news director really made me excited and hopeful. And, but at, at the end of the day, he was right. And yeah. it was the push that I needed to get off my butt and start <laughs> applying to realistic Uh, places where I could get that experience and where more importantly I could make those mistakes and I could you know just hit the ground running and be on TV immediately and not have to work my way up so I was only in Thunder Bay for a year Mm -hmm. and uh, a year how'd you get back um, a a part-time VJ position for the weekend news opened up here at CH and I applied and I sent that same news director an email like, hey, like, do you remember <laughs> me? I'm applying again. Um, and so uh, they requested an interview with the VP of news and the news director at that time. And uh, yeah, I, it went so well. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, come back part time. And that was another risk. Like I was yeah. working full time in Thunder Bay. And then I only secured a part time job here at CH. But I knew for sure I was going to take it. Like there was no chance I was missing out on an opportunity yeah. like that. So I, I took it and on like I had no risk at the time yeah. in my life. Like I was coming back to live with my parents. It's not like I had a mortgage or rent to pay in Hamilton. Yeah, like yeah. I could take that risk and say, OK, I'm only going to I might only be working Mm-hmm. 30 hours a week mind you I worked way more than that even <laughs> part-time but oh, part-time was the best yeah. part-time like don't I mean don't get me wrong don't, it doesn't what I mean but the overtime on part-time yeah. especially when you're first getting it yeah I'll do that I'll do that and that sure, was yeah me. absolutely yeah, yeah I did every shift like morning show evening yeah. news like everything and everything anything and everything I I could do the I bu- did and I was I mean we're gonna get to that because you have done Everything on air, basically here that there is to do, except for weather, sport. Like there's yeah. things because like I've never anchored the six, right? But like I've hosted Trending Now, yep. I've hosted Morning Live, I've done all these other things. Um, is there anything here that you haven't done except this podcast job? I mean, I guess you haven't. Yeah, you, you haven't done po- that. You got to host podcast. a podcast. <laughs> Maybe next week you can fill in for me or yeah, something, just so you sure, can check it off. The, it. You can check <laughs> off the box. Um, yeah, no podcast, but everything else like on air, I think I've done. I've been yeah. a reporter for every show that we have. I've yep. been an anchor for every show that we have. So that's what, kind why, of it. Why do you still love it? Why do you still love this oh, job? It's different every day. And uh, yeah, some days we, we have stories that don't personally interest us or like, you know, are more boring than we would like them to be, <laughs> but are still important, of course, yeah. to cover. But then like we get kind of act like a access to yeah. everything going on in the city. And we kind of have like this, um, 
we're kind of like first to know about everything that's going on yeah. and it's just different. I come to work every day. I have no idea what I'm going to do. And uh, it could be a crazy, hectic day, which a lot of times <laughs> those days are the best days, right? Because mm. it's a lot of things going on. Um, but yeah, just the, the freshness of it every day, never knowing what's going to happen. A born and raised Hamiltonian. Um, you went to Western, so I'm sure... People had some chirps about yes. Hamilton and, and McMaster that you heard. Um, All the time. But you are a very proud Hamiltonian. Yeah, I love um, living here. What is it about this city, especially like now that you're, as somebody who grew up here, had an opinion of it, somebody who's grown up here and now lives as an adult, what is it about Hamilton that, that you still love to this uh, day? Well, I... Like all my whole family's here and my husband's family is here. So it just, Hamilton just has always been home for me. Like, it doesn't matter if I went to London, Thunder Bay, like, it doesn't matter. It's Hamilton's always been home. There's this comfort of being here. Um, I love the vibrancy of the city, the amazing restaurants, the beautiful trails, the, you know, gorgeous nature that we have here, our beautiful waterfalls. And it just feels like home. And I know that some people are like, oh, I could never, I could never live in the city that I grew up in, or I got to get out of this place. I've never felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and like you said, getting that access, getting to be first, getting the people who get to tell that story, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that's always draw drawn you even as a high school kid, to this place here. Yeah, totally. I knew that if I wanted to be a TV news reporter and I wanted to live in Hamilton, that CH <laughs> was going to be the place. Yeah. And also I grew up watching CH too, right? Yeah. So there's that that familiarity and that comfort of recognizing the people in your community and the faces on TV. So yeah, I knew it had to be CH. And when I was in Thunder Bay, I was just like, oh, I need to, I love Thunder Bay and it was such an amazing experience, but I always knew that it was temporary and I needed to somehow get back to Hamilton. <laughs> uh, we talked about viewers a little bit here at the top and, you know, just conversation. when I have these conversations with people I work with, I'm always looking for a little bit of advice because some people say, don't read the comments. Some people say, take comments with a grain of salt. Some people uh, do really well with criticism. Some people don't do well with criticism. As somebody who's in front of the camera and receives these comments, how have you learned, especially in the age of social media, to deal with interactions? Yeah. I would say most people are um, either really nice or have uh, legitimate criticisms that are good for us to hear sometimes. But there are always going to be trolls. And uh, I'd be lying to say that the trolls don't annoy me. <laughs> like, they really do. And so, based on what you said, I would say don't read the comments. Don't read the comments. Yeah, like sometimes... And you know what? It, it might not even be a personal attack on you. It might be something to do with your story or the station itself. But there's always going to be trolls and they're not worth anybody's time. Mm. If you have something constructive to say about somebody's story or how it was presented or journalism itself, absolutely. Drop a comment. I'd love to see it. I'd love to read it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're just going to be a troll and comment on something silly or say something outlandish. Yeah. I, I'm not going to give it the time of day. Um, favorite thing you've done here at CHCH? Uh, surprisingly, and if you had asked me this when I started, I would have told you that you're crazy, but I <laughs> love sitting in on trials and doing court stories. You love it. Yeah, I you really do. It. But you know what? When I first started, uh, it was so hard because yeah. the lingo in court is something you so have to get used to because yeah. it goes right over your head if you're not familiar with it. And the publication bans on what you can report and what you can't report. It's all really serious stuff mm -hmm. and you have to be held accountable to all of these things. So it's really important. Um, but definitely a lot of the trials yeah. I've done and, yeah. and even though they're like horrific and sad, all the, the murder trials like really stick with you because yeah. you're there sitting in the courtroom sometimes for weeks at a time and you hear details that have never been shared before. So like when police send out media releases, when, you know, homicide first happens, it's very vague and you don't really get a sense of what happened. But when you're sitting in the courtroom, you kind of, that, that picture gets filled in of what may have happened and you hear different sides of the story. So as much as it's 
extremely sad, yeah. sometimes horrific to yeah. see what happens in a courtroom. Sometimes the photos are really graphic and terrible. It kind of, those are the stories that always stick with you because you get so invested in them because you're there following it for so long. You need to see what happens. Mm. Yeah. No, I, uh, I've, I've told you this and I told you this once, like you've come back from Matt leave the last few weeks. I'm, I'm always like super impressed watching you work because you're such a pro <laughs> the way you handle phone calls. Like you were like, an old school journalist in today's times, <laughs> right? Like, but I no, I have high praise. Like, you're like a young Al Sweeney type. Oh wow! <laughs> but like your no. fearlessness of knocking on doors and things like that. Like, and you said it. Like, even from college, going yeah. out there and making cold calls and stopping people on the street. Like, that prevents a lot of people from becoming better journalists. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also a fear of people from just getting in the business. So yeah, totally. I, I always like whenever you're on the phone call, I'm like, oh, Kelly, like this is how you ask. <laughs> this is how you ask for an interview. This is how you schedule an interview. Oh, I think so. Um, so I, I got high that. praise for you. And I'm glad, uh, you know, I was saying we've done this before on this set a little bit different yeah. in our trending nowadays. Uh, but thank you for doing this. I really appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Louie. My pleasure. Awesome. All right. That is Kelly Patello. My thanks to her for joining me today. Uh, and my thanks to you as well, because we could, could not do the show with Without your support. Um, hey, while you're here, make sure you like and subscribe to CHCH Podcast so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you, including Sportsline with Bubba O'Neill. Uh, I want to thank Laura Brody for directing today's episode. And one more time, thank you for listening from all of us here at CHCH. I'm Louis Bucko. Have a great day. <laughs>